G'day guys, welcome back. I had to climb down my ladder, run around the table and say hi, <laughs> because I'm doing a very big project today and um, I know you can't see everything, but you'll see most of it because um, it's very long. Um, now what I am doing, I'll try and go through it real quick. I've got the three canvases, as you can see, each one is 50 centimeters by 60 centimeters, which is <clears throat> about nine, 18 inches by 24 inches actually 20 by 24 it's 20 by 24 <clears throat> so that's what it is um, now I've seen I was I was just sort of scrolling through YouTube the other day and um, I saw this painting in um, red and black down the bottom white and gray at the top and then it had all these like crystals and things in the center and i thought oh that would be perfect for christy's new house you know my daughter christy's just bought her new house and i did that um cloudy pearl pour in the burgundy um gold black obviously white and red so that's up um in her lounge room but she's got this massive couch and i want to do this for above the couch in the same colors she's got a gray couch I got her some burgundy cushions, so this is going to go up on her wall. So, um, the two videos that I saw, the first one, I've written them down, the first one was by <clears throat> Liz, Liz DIYs, she did the, the red one. The other one um, was by Wendy Devereaux, she did a teal one. I don't know who came first, <clears throat> who was the original, I, I don't know. I, I'm taking inspiration from both of them. So check out their channels. So what I'm going to do is, I've got my, my grey, my white, my black and my burgundy. Uh, they're just art, they're, um, oh what are they? Montmartre, they're Montmartre. So I'm going to just, I'm going to start, um, I think I'll do the, I think I'll do the grey and the white down here. So I've, I've made a line, as you can see where my halfway mark is. Now the same on each, I've leveled them all. And um, I'm going to use a, a paintbrush. This is the one I painted Christie's um, feature wall with the other day. It's a purpley plum colour. <laughs> Got bits of it still stuck on there. Right. Um, <clears throat> now what they did was they actually laid pieces of paint down and then sort of smeared them. But I'm just going to go like like this. Actually, the first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to spray. <clears throat> this is just water. I'm going to start over here. Just to, um, it's going to spray that, just so that the paint sort of flows better. So I'm just going to start with the grey, put a little bit on there. Um, it's kind of like this. Like I said, I don't know how much I wanted to use. Actually, it's probably a bit too much water on there. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Let's not put water on there because the paint's all running now. Oh my god, that's a great way to start a video, isn't it? No. I probably don't need water on it. Alright, let's try that again, shall we? Let's put some paint on. That's better. Just gonna sort of do that. Shall do I'll do them all that way I've just um using my grey paint. And then I can wipe my brush. And I can change to the the white. Which I probably should go up a little bit higher. So what I think I'll do is I'll probably do a bit and then I'll I'll fast forward the video, otherwise you're gonna be bored watching the same thing three times. But I'll just do a little bit and then I can fast forward it. Um I think I'll leave that's not much left on there. I'm just gonna dab some white into that. And feel free to do this however you want. I mean, just because I'm doing it like this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, you don't have to do it like this. The other girls, I said, they put down strips of paint and then blended, but I just figured it was easier this way for me anyway. And I can sort of blend more. So I've got the white and the grey already on there. And then um, I'll clean my brush. And I'll change colours. But I, I do need to do the sides as well. So you probably don't need as much grey. Try and go in 
straight lines. Now the grey is obviously, it's a darker colour so it's quite overpowering. Try and go in straight lines. And if you want a little bit more of the dark, just pop it in. Just find this way the, for me, the easiest. I can blend my colours nicely. And you want those lines, so try and go as straight as you can. Ooh, I'm running out of white here. I'm going to put some more on. Just add another blob of white. Whoa, oh my god, how, does, how did blue get in there? Ooh, that's no good, is it? I don't know how that happened. Obviously I was using blue another day. All right. Um, a bit of paper towel. Got some pieces of paper towel cut up over here. Just need to get that blue out. Is there any more? I don't want blue on my painting. There we go. That'll do. Okay, let's get back to it. These are just little plastic picnic plates I thought would be easy to use. I've got lots of them. So I'll go up and down, up and down. Oops, there's a little blob of something in there. Now we are going to cover up that centre join there, so you don't have to be that precise with it. We are going to cover it over. But I do need to cover my edges. Probably needed a little bit more paint. I've never done this before, so don't judge me too much. I'm learning. I needed to have a little bit more paint so I could come down here into the um, into the bottom there all the way down. Otherwise, then I have to put more on the bottom and then you're going to see that join there. So enough that it goes all the way through, hey? The first time. See, we're learning together. It's the best way, isn't it? Learning by doing, I always say. You learn much faster if you're actually doing it. Okay. All right, so that one's, that one's pretty much done, I think. So I'm going to put you on fast forward. I'm going to finish that one. I'm going to do that one. Then I'm going to turn them around and we'll do the other colour. Right. Now I'm going to climb up my ladder. So that I can stop the video. Right, so that's done. I'm really happy with the colours and the, the shading. Now, I don't really have a little paintbrush to get in there. I'm actually just going to use my finger and I'm going to just put some grey on there. And I'm just going to kind of... Oops. Not supposed to do that. Oh, maybe I can get in there. It's just awkward. It might be better doing the sides first and then going over the... Oh, yeah, no, that works. That way I can still blend my colours. All right, let's do that. I'll just blend, bring the white back over here and I'll just kind of blend a little bit so that I can have the, the lighter sort of grey in there as well. Put a little bit of each in. Whoops, we're moving. Yeah, it would have been better to do the sides first. Let's do that next time, or you guys can do that. Do the sides first. That way you don't mess up your top. 
okay all right let's do this one as well see now oh this is see definitely need to do the, the sides first because now I'm going to mess up my my top all right we learned that the hard way didn't we let's do that for the next color because otherwise you're going to see your brush strokes aren't you so definitely you guys learn from me do your sides first doesn't take long to do so I'll just do this one and then I'll I'll put you on pause and I'll finish it's gonna go really gently just fast just to cover these brush marks down the bottom that I've left there's no point starting there and brushing them you're gonna see them you have to go all the way across all right oops there's a bit shining a little bit of white can see through the side there okay how are we looking pretty good all right I'm gonna stop I'm gonna do the others and I'm gonna turn them around and um, I'll be right back if I can get my glove off press pause oh, got it right all done I'm loving that gray and white Obviously, if you want more white in yours, you can do that. Or if you want it darker, you can do that. Whatever you want. Um, and I haven't thinned down my paints with water or Floetrol or anything because I'm only doing one coat. And I thought if I thin them out, you're going to see the canvas through them. So, yeah, I didn't want to do that. Now, I've just wiped as much paint as I could off, really, with a dry um, cloth there or paper towel. Um, if you had two paint brushes, obviously change, but I didn't want to wet this one. It's the only one I've got. I didn't want to wet it. So I've just wiped as much as I could off. And let's go with, um, what will we start with? I might do the burgundy first. Now, obviously the black, because it's a darker cut, it's going to take over. So I probably won't need as much. Oh, the sides, the sides. Jeez memory like a sieve let me do the sides real quick uh, so there's just a there's a little bit of black there's a little bit of red i'm not being too precious about it i'm just kind of getting the sides done if they're all black it doesn't matter a little bit of red in there you probably can't see that but i'll just do that real quick I don't have the same problem I did last time, hey? So you go up the side of the canvas and then where the roll is of the canvas, I'm just going to pop some red over the top of that black. I'm going to call it red, even though it's burgundy. I'm just going to call it red for the sake of today. It's easier. Gee, the black's really taken over. I can hardly see that. Red. I'm going to go underneath, catch my drips. Now, the top, just do that, do that like that so that you've got the top of that roll of the canvas as well all the way around so that when you come to do your lines they'll go straight over and you won't have to do any touch-ups hey how's that for a plan how's that for a plan Stan Oops. just trying to blend them there looks as if it's more black than anything. I'll have to be careful when I put my black down, actually, that I don't make it too, too heavy. Otherwise, I won't even see the red. Hey. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the rest. And um, I'll come back to you. Just the sides. All done, my sides. Now that black really took over. So she was blending, um, it just went black. So I'm gonna have to be really careful how, how I blend them. So I think I'm gonna put my red on first. I'm gonna put the tiniest little bit of black on. Or maybe I'll just even leave. See this here, I've got some, a tiny bit of black blended into the red. I might just leave it like that. We'll see what it does. 
put some red on first. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll cover the whole thing with red. It's probably my best option, I think. Um, and then just paint a little bit of black very lightly over the top. Otherwise, I'm going to lose all that red. So maybe do a little test piece if you're doing this. If you want to have a try, do a little test piece and just see what colours take over, especially if you're using black, just be careful. I'm just trying to do a, a join here. It doesn't really matter because you're going to cover it. And I don't want to just do a line, I'd rather do that like that. Make it a little bit more natural looking. All right, I'm going to need to get more red out. We'll bring that red <clears throat> right down over the bottom like I did with the last colour with the grey. Whoops. That way I don't have to worry about going over it again like I did with that first one. That was a good little test piece actually, the white and grey. I'm glad I did that first and not the red one first. I would have been in a lot of trouble if I'd done the other way around. I'm using a lot more of the red though. It's a pretty colour, isn't it? I, I don't even know how I made it. It was ages ago. It was Montmartre crimson, red, um, a little bit of brown. Um, I can't even remember how I did it. I just googled how to make burgundy. Mainly red though with a tiny bit of brown. Okay, so even that looks good just as it is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tiniest little bit of black just there, I'm not even going to put it in the thick black, just over here on the side. I'm just going to drag that across very lightly. Just in a couple of areas. Try not to make it too designed, you know, like exactly in the same spot and I'll go over the black again so that we can see the red coming through. You can see my lines aren't very straight here. Uh, and then if you want a little bit more, want it a bit darker, you can put it a little bit darker in a couple of areas. But um, yeah, I'm just going to be careful that I don't overtake my red. But I do want to see the black, so I'm just going to build up the black carefully and slowly so that I don't lose all my red. Put a bit more black on the edge there. Okay. I'll have a little play with it. I'll come back to it. I do want some black areas. All right, so that's basically the first one done. I'll probably have a little bit more of a play with it and put a little bit more black in. Just being careful. All right, I'm going to move on and do the next two. Um, let me fast forward it again. I can fast forward it like I did with the grey one so you can see right. Oh, I am back. I have to get my hair dryer out and dry this because where I went over it with the red, it was much thicker. So I had to dry it with the hair dryer and it's dried a lot darker than I was, well, 
I was expecting it to be darker, but it's a little bit too dark for what I'm going for. So I'm just going to go over it just with some straight red. Uh, this is brilliant red. Um, and I'm just going to put like a little bit on and just kind of, just kind of blend it because when it dries, it's going to go a bit darker anyway. So let's start. And I'm not going to go like to make big panels. I'm just going to do kind of more wispy. Just, and I know you probably can't see over there, but I'm um, just going to kind of wisp it on in a few areas. Just to put a tiny bit on my brush. So that you can still see the other colours through underneath. So it's not making like a, a panel as such. It's just, oops, I've got a bit of a thick paint underneath. It's just sort of, I don't know, just a very light hint of the, the brighter red over the top. Like that. See how it's sort of thicker there and it thins down there and it's sort of, just more blended really, not not like a block of colour, but so that you can still see the the darker red or the burgundy underneath and uh, also the black underneath, because this is going to dry darker anyway. See that? See how it's just, I don't know how to explain that, but it's not just a block of colour, it's kind of thinned out down the bottom there. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what you call that. Blending. So that you can still see the, the black underneath. And then when this dries, uh, it will dry darker, obviously, but hopefully it'll be pretty. I don't mind having the two shades of the red in there. And uh, I will get my hair dryer out and dry this as well because I want to do the next step. Now the next step, while I'm doing this, I'll talk to you about the next step. See over here, I've got a little bit more red. That's fine, more of a block of red and then less down here, which is fine. Just looks more natural. So once I've dried this, I am going to put some resin. I'm going to make up a bit of resin and I'm going to put some resin. I'm going to take a bit off there, actually it's a bit thick. I'm going to take some resin and I'm going to put it across the centre there. Um, and I'm going to, oops, it's a, a bit thick there. I'm just going to take a bit of that off. No reason why you can't wipe it off if you've gone a bit much. As I said, I want to see the other colour go straight through. I didn't want a block of red. So we'll just wipe some off. Um, yeah, I'm going to put some resin across there. Uh, and I'm going to kind of brush it on. If you don't want to use resin, uh, you don't have any, you're new to resin, you can by all means use something like um, Mod Podge or um, what's the other one I've got? Hang on, let me grab it for you. Something like this liquid glass, which is a nice thick so it's like a top coat, so it's going to be thick and it's going to be sticky and it'll dry clear. So something like that, something that's a glue, you can even use glue, So, but I'm going to use resin because I know it's going to stick really well. So whatever you've got, um, and then I'm going to stick down the crushed glass and some glitter and uh, it's going to look really pretty. Spread some of this red out a little bit more. I think I need a little bit more red just here. I don't know, I just brushed it off and now I'm putting it back on. <laughs> just trying to get those sort of natural sort of brush strokes, which look really attractive, I think. How's that? Probably need to go and stand back and look at it. I'm a bit close here. I need to go and stand on the other side where you, where you are and see what it's going to look like. Actually, I quite like that darker, more red at the top there, and then it 
fades down into the the black although some of this red across here is going to get covered by the crushed glass and the glitter so I'm trying to make some streaks I'm trying to make it look as natural as possible I'm put my streaks in just remembering that some of that will get covered by the the glass Hopefully I'm not putting too, too much on now, the red, but it was just way too dark for me. All right, I think that's it. Now this one over here just needs to have a little bit more feathering. Feathering, that's it. Feathering. Just to match the other two. at the top and then it just feathers down like so and hopefully that will look nice a little bit brighter the other one was just a little bit dark hey eh? all right how's that looking now a little bit more I want them to sort of match, so whoops, a bit much there. Anyway, I'm gonna have a little fiddle with it. I want to see that straight edge there. I'm gonna have a little bit of a fiddle with it. I'm gonna dry it off with my hair dryer. I'm gonna make up my resin and um, I'll come back to you. Now, oh, looking at it from up here. Okay, so what I can see from up here is the feathering of the red doesn't match the white and gray of the other side, does it? Not really, because I've you know I've done that and then I've stopped. Whereas over here, I've gone straight through. So I either have to go straight through here or I put some more color on that one and kind of feather it. Maybe I can try and go all the way down. Mm, I don't know. I don't want to ruin it, but it just kind of doesn't match now. We have to just do a little bit more like this. So it's more straight down, I think, is what is required. Because I don't really want to do another coat on the grey side. So I'm just going to have to bring this down like so all the way so that we get the same effect i'm not putting any more paint on my brush i'm just pulling through what i've already got there to create those straight lines that look of straight lines And hopefully that will work better. Like I knew the burgundy was going to be dark, but I just didn't realise it was going to be that dark. There's a little bit that's catching over there. Just wipe some of that off because it's kind of catching and sticking. All right, I'll leave it. Well, I'll leave you anyway, and um, I'll have a look at it from up there again and, and see if it needs anything else. But I'm going to mix up my resin. I'm going to dry this off with the hairdryer, and uh, I'll come back to you shortly. All right, finished with the red, turn it around. Because the red is more like this feathered look now, and the grey is just straight, I've done a little bit of grey on this one. Um, I just put a little bit of grey down and I watered it down with some water, thinned it down with some water. Now I'm just going to really just lightly just sort of go over it like this just to kind of, I know it looks a bit different now, but it'll dry the same colour just to make it match. Okay, just so that we've got that sort of feathering look on both sides. Otherwise, I think it's just going to look odd. Uh, it's, it's still going to be really pretty. It's just going to be um, 
not as stripy, I guess. There's no reason why it has to be stripy. So I'm just haphazardly just putting some of the grey here. Just kind of to make it match the, the red. So we'll wait and see what happens when it dries. I don't want to put too much on because I don't want to lose the white. But um, yeah, just want it to match the other side, hey? Otherwise it's going to look a bit odd. But um, I have plans to do another one um, in um, teal and maybe some purple. We'll see what happens. See what happens. All right, so we'll see how that dries. I'm going to get the hair dryer out. Let's put that over there. Get my hair dryer out. Put it on high. Dry it off. Continue. You don't need to hear me using the hairdryer, but um, yeah, it just it's made it look. It's given a different look, hasn't it? Totally different look. At least they match now. All right, I'm going to mix up my resin. I'm going to keep drying this, and I'll be back for the next step. All done. Now I've made up my resin. This is the Delcom Crystal Clear. It's a slightly thicker resin. It's a one-to-one -one instead of a two-to-one. The one-to-ones tend to be a bit um, thicker. I wonder if I can put that there. So, yeah, I made 300 grams. I figured 100, 200, 300. And I'm going to put... Like, initially, I was just going to put down clear and I was going to sprinkle glitter onto it. And then I thought, well, what about if I put the gold into the resin and then I can like sprinkle glitter over the top of that later. Let's put a whole heap in. Why not, hey? Let's just try it and see what happens. Because I want a nice, nice amount of gold bling in there. And then I've got the silver crushed glass. Well, it's clear, but it's kind of, it's got like a silver mirror backing to it. You know that one? That's from Ikea. Well, I get it from eBay, but I think Ikea does sell it as well. So look at that. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Wow. So pretty. I think that's enough mica. That one was the Pearl X, Pearl X Brilliant Gold, that one. So hopefully that's enough. I just want to make sure that I mix it really well though because I don't want little bits of mica powder floating to the top. I guess it won't really matter. Now the other thing, what I'm going to use, because I'm going to pour some on, but then I want to make like points to mirror my points in my colour. My sort of up down sort of markings, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. So I am going to use a foam brush. Oops, let me get the other one <laughs> reaching over in front of you. This is this is how they come to originally. No, nice soft foam brush. But once it's had resin on it, it goes hard. So I'm just going to use that one, and I'm just going to like drag the resin through because I don't need to ruin another brush. Because once you've got resin on it, that's it. You can't use it again unless you want to use it again for resin. So I thought just as well I've kept it because I can use it again now because I was wondering what on earth was I going to use with this rock hard foam brush. Right, here we go. I don't know if I've made up enough or too much. I don't know. I'm just going to pour some. Oh, look at that. I don't really, really want it to go over the edge. I mean, if it does, I can't help it, but I don't really want it to. Pour it there. Still got some left. I'm 
just going to put my lid back onto my mica so I don't ruin it, knock it over or anything. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to get my little brush here. And we'll just take that to the edge gently without it sort of flowing over. And now we can just do this up and down, up and down. Some will be, I'm just going to go up and down all the way just for now, the first time. And then the second time I come past, my second pass, um, I'll make some a bit longer and some shorter just so that it's not identical, you know, so it looks again more natural. So I'm getting these lovely points. It's making a pretty sound too. <laughs> zoop, 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 zoop. Okay, let's go over here, do this one. So I have got more resin if I need more. But I just wanted to see what this is going to look like first. Because the resin does spread, it's self-leveling and it spreads, so I didn't want to start off with too, too much. See how I've made the lines through it and it's all kind of come back in again, it's joined up. So let's go again with some more lines. make some a little bit bigger than others if I can. It's a little bit difficult. The resin doesn't want to move all that much. I'd have to use like the side of the brush a little bit. Just so that I'm getting some wider pieces. Oops, that might be too wide. some this way because so I've got a lot of sort of flat-ish edges there. Drag some of this down just so that it's not all the same length. You know, I want it up and down, up and down. Oops, what's going on here? What's going on there, hey? This is what I've got gloves on. Now what I'm going to do? Resin on my fingers. Let's see if I can fix this little area here. Again, try not to make it too perfect. The very edge, the very points, um, they're a bit too pointy. I sort of have to use the, the side almost just to get that resin to spread a little bit more. It just takes a bit of practice. But if you weren't using resin, like I said, if you're using glue, Mod Podge, whatever you want to do. I'm just working this out as I go. I'm sort of, as you can see, I'm just sort of dragging the corner now of the, the brush. It seems to be working. If I need to add more, I will. More resin, that is. Add a bit more resin there on that one. Just fast forward if you don't want to. If you don't want to watch this, it's too, it's difficult for me to um to put you on pause when I've got resin and gloves and stuff everywhere. It's tricky, so just fast forward. I won't mind. So put a little bit more up here. Spread that. So wherever the resin or with the gold is, is um, that's where your um, glass will stick to. I guess you could just do it this way as well. If you wanted to make a few more little points in a particular area, use your, your stick. 
So quite a bit of resin like drops and I just need to kind of join them up a bit. I feel. Same over here. I just kind of need to join them. Make some a bit longer so that they're not all exactly the same. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Hopefully you do. Whoops. Oh my gosh. I'm dripping with my... Where am I going to put this? I'm dripping with it. Out of the way, dog. Dog, dog, dog. Out of the way. Now, how am I going to clean that off? Hang on. I have to get a little baby wipe here. Although, I'll take the paint off. Hey, you've got to be careful. Be careful where you drip. What's going to happen if I take that off? Be alright? Hopefully it'll be alright. I'll just be more careful. Alright, bear with me. I'm just going to do this a little bit more just to neaten up my points. Work out where I want my glass to go. Right up to the edge. Not necessarily over, but I'd like it to go up to the edge. I think it was a brilliant idea on my behalf doing the gold in the resin. Hey, what do you think? Brilliant idea. longer up here and I guess because it's gold you can see what you're doing <laughs> although the Mod Podge is white isn't it you could see what you're doing with that too you can see where you're going I just like the idea of the resin it's sort of it's more permanent and I wasn't quite sure how well Mod Podge would even stick. Not that I've ever used it before. Alright, how are we looking? I'm going to go up the end and look across and make sure that we're sort of centred. This one needs some more down here. So just as well I made up that 300 grams of resin, hey? Seems to be moving back the resin, it seems to be pulling back a little bit into the centre. I'm just about done. Just about done, hey? Yeah, another little look across the top. I need a little bit more over here, a bit more height here. Ooh, there's a blob there. And a blob there. Might as well use up my resin. Can't use it for anything else. Alright, how's that? You can probably see areas that I've missed that need more, but like I said, I don't want it to look too placed. I want it to look natural. Fill in some of these lower areas. resin's starting to thicken up now. I can 
feel it starting to thicken, which is fine. It just needs to hold some glass on it, that's all. And it's probably a good thing that it starts to thicken a little bit. These ones here are all quite in a row, so make them a little bit different. So they're not all the same height. Hey, oh no, now I'm dripping. Oh, Alright, let's stop. Let's let's stop. I'm dripping. Oops, that's the wrong alcohol wipe. Not this one might still be a little bit dry, a little bit wet. I can just wipe that off. Okay, so now the fun part begins. Um, a little bit of resin left there if I need it. Mm, everything's a bit sticky. Let me just clean up. Uh, I'm going to take my... Um, oh, no. I was going to say I'm going to take my gloves off, but... Actually, there's a weird bit there. <laughs> oh, no! She's never going to finish. That little weird bit there. Okay. Now the glass I'm using. Are we still taping? I better jump up and make sure we're still taping. Yep. This is gonna be a long video, you guys. Sorry. Right, the glass. This is it here. It's crushed actually crushed mirror I think it is um, now what I need to do is uh, I need a spoon I think would be the easiest thing I'll just use this I've got this it's just a this tablespoon that I've got now obviously when I sprinkle it it's going to go on the canvas but um, the bits that don't stick, I'll just brush off later. I don't want to put that much on that it's going to cover the gold because, you know, I want to see the gold. But I just want the sparkle of the mirror glass. And because it's got that sort of blackish look on the back of the mirror, um, it'll match in with the um, the grey and the black on the, on the bottom half here. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take me. I guess I can just do this. Oh, I don't think it'll take. I don't think it'll take too long. Um, I'll talk to you while I'm doing this. My dog Lexi, she had a puppy two days ago. So last letter, just one little puppy, a little girl. She had it by a cesarean section Monday night. Uh, so I have, I've had a couple of sleepless nights because when they birth by caesarean, um, they haven't gone through a full labour, so they don't get their milk in as quick as um, the girl who has gone through labour. So she didn't have any milk. She still actually got mainly colostrum two days later. So I've been bottling the little baby through the night, which is <laughs> exhausting exhausting but she's doing well because they always lose weight for the first day or two but she was losing a little bit more weight than she should have so that's why I thought well I better start bottling her uh, but she's doing really well little red girl I just can't leave I had to cancel my shift at work yesterday because I, I can't leave um, you know, for nine or ten hours, I have to feed the baby. And Lexi's also, her hormones are all over the place. She wants to pick the baby up and carry it around the house and come and sit with me. So I really can't leave her for too long. When I do go out, um, my daughter Gemma just sits with her, make sure she doesn't do anything silly. So, yeah, I've got, um, I'm not back at work for another week now, so that's 
worked out well. Look at this, I'm going to go through my whole jar of glass. So any bits that are not stuck to the resin tomorrow, um, I'll just brush off and I'll put them back in the jar. <laughs> but I'll use all of this. And hopefully I won't drop any on the floor because it hurts when you stand on it. Oh, there's some just went off over the edge. I'll have to vacuum. How's that looking? I'll try and get up here to these little points. So we've got some bling on the points. And then while the resin's still wet, um, I'm going to come in with some gold glitter and some red glitter and just sprinkle that over the top. And hopefully there's enough room left <laughs> that the glitter can find the resin. I hope I'm not putting too much on. So I just wanted the hint of the gold underneath. Tiny bit left. Hardly worth. Actually, I might just put a bit more through the centre. Just go through the centre with this last little bit that I've got here. Whoa! There's always dust in the bottom. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have tipped it out. Okay, so now um, I'm going to actually take my gloves off now. get them off. Looks a bit of a mess at the moment, doesn't it? But hopefully it will look really pretty once it's all dry and done. Now I've got some red glitter and some gold glitter. They're very fine glitters. I didn't want anything too chunky. And I've seen other people like when they when they sprinkle it, they get a big blob. And I thought, well, I don't want that. I wonder what would happen if I put it in a little sieve and then I can like sieve it. Do you think that would work? That's what I do with icing sugar on a cake. So I'm going to try it and see if it'll work. If it doesn't work, well, I haven't lost anything. Ah! Okay. I'm just, it's kind of working. It's very fine, so it's, it's, it is falling through pretty quickly, but it is dispersing, I think, better than what I would be able to disperse it if I just dropped it in a clump. I'm going to make sure that I don't use it all on the one panel because I need some for the others. Probably a third on that one. Okay, and I'll move to the next one. She might change hands. No. No, because I'm right-handed. I'll need to shake with this hand. Shake as I pour. Shake, shake, shake as I pour. That way I'm not going to get a big clump. It's going to be more spread out. Make sure I get the edges. My little points. Hopefully it'll be really shiny and blingy. Once it's dried, a little bit more through the centre there just to cover up that line. I don't really want to see that line, do we? Okay, next one. Oh, I've still got half left. Probably use all of it. It cost me $4 for this little tube of glitter. So I'm not going to put as much of the red glitter on. I'll just put a little bit of the glitter of the red on, I think. I'm actually tapping it onto the side there. That seems to work. All right, now let's do through the center line there. Cover up that line a little bit. hard to see where I haven't done any. 
and go over the edges a little bit more, I think. Make sure I've got some bling on the edges up there. And down here. Hope I'm not boring you guys. But yeah, you can, you can fast forward, hey? I'm enjoying it. Like, I know a lot of people fast forward, but, you know, when you're doing it for something, for fun, you know, you don't want to, I don't want to miss anything. Well, I don't. I just want to enjoy the process, talk to you. I've got much left. I wonder what happens if I do that. Oh, yeah, look, that works as well. It's, it's a very fine glitter, so it doesn't, it doesn't um, fall in a big clump. Oh, look, it's empty. It's empty. There we go. That was four dollars worth. Okay, now the red. I don't want to put as much red on. I've only got this little jar of red. I did buy the bigger one, but I think this one's darker, and I want the darker to match that, so I've gone with the little one. So just a little bit, a little bit. Let's just try and sprinkle them. Seems the other one worked that worked pretty good, pretty well, I should say. I've come up from higher and. Sprinkle. See, but see what I mean? It does like fall in a bit of a a blob. Unless you come up from quite high and it just kind of flows down. That's the that's the thing, I guess. Not doing it from too close. just doing this works just shaking my hand gently and again a little bit more through the center there not too much you know I want to incorporate the red but I also don't want to lose too much of the gold go through the center with the red Hide that little line a bit. Oops, I think I'm done. There we go. All done. Now the other thing we need to do is, um, I'm going to get a piece of paper or card or something and put it on and just press it down. Just so that you don't have too much wastage on top. Um, I've got a piece of cardboard. a piece of cardboard that'll work just gonna put it there mm, I think maybe the paper would be better because the paper's gonna kind of like bend into all the little crevices I've got a book here I'll just tear a piece of paper out there we go a piece of paper all right I can push, I can bend the paper, so I can actually probably push down into the little the crevices, I think, would be better. Move that down and do the next area. So that's just basically pushing the glass into the resin, because I don't want too much of it to, you know, fall off tomorrow. Hopefully my resin is not set enough that it's not going to um, let anything get pushed down into it, but it should be okay. Pretty sharp pointy bits of glass, so it should be okay to be pushed down into the resin. But you can see why I think resin would work better than just glue. I don't know, look, I don't know, try it, try the glue, see what you think push down along the edges a bit because the paper didn't get the edges it wasn't quite long enough just push down on those edges okay there we go throw that in the bin throw that in the bin 
have got a little bit of resin on my hand, so I need to wash that off. Alrighty, <laughs> I'm just going to get cleaned up and I'm going to take it down for a close up. All right, what do you think? Look at the shine. Look how it sparkles. Isn't that amazing? And obviously there's a lot more stuff on there that's going to come off tomorrow, but you can see how it's all really pretty and sparkly. Can't really see that center line. I mean, a little bit, but I guess if I put more glitter on, Maybe you wouldn't see it, but I ran out. It'll be fine. Well, it's my first experience with this. Now, when I was out buying glitter, I bought this. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. Um, Crystal Coat Gloss Varnish. I like to spray the whole thing when it's, when it's done and when it's dry. Um, it may just, you know, stop any loose glitter or glass or anything that wants to fall off later on down the track so yeah I'm not sure if I want to use it we'll see see what happens but there it is love it okay I'm gonna get myself cleaned up go and sit with Lexi watch a movie and I'll have to wait for tomorrow before I can clean this up but anyway I'll see you tomorrow thanks for being patient see you soon Hey guys, I'm back. It's the same night. I, I tested it. It feels hard to me. Um, now I've got this soft paintbrush and I tried to kind of scrape the loose bits off with that. Some of them are coming but not enough. So I found this hairbrush. It hasn't been used so I thought it's, it's quite it's quite a stronger bristle so I'm gonna have a go with that. Okay. So I've got this little bit of paper here to catch some drips, but I think it'll just all kind of fall onto the puppy pedal pad, which is okay. Right, so here we go. Brushing, brushing. I'm hoping not too much of it's going to fall on the floor. It's kind of rolling off. And then when there's little bits that I don't really want, I can sort of pick them off. Maybe they're a bit loose. So this is working well, this little brush here. And I think I'll have to turn it around and do the other side. Oops, there's a little bit of bit of glass there. Let's turn it around. I'll do the other side. It's really awkward. I'm trying to hold it and not get my arm in the way and <laughs> brush it all at the same time. But I'm just going to do one and then I'll do the others on my own because this is really awkward. Oops, there we go. I can just sort of pick those off. So you can see the shape now, the points that I made. It's looking really pretty. a really good hard scrub with the brush. Well I can anyway because it's resin. Uh, I'm not so sure if you use a like a glue how much you'll be able to rub but because it's resin I can give it a good scrub a dub dub. Alright and then probably with the other one just get that glitter off like so. I might even get the vacuum out actually and vacuum the, the rest of the glitter up. But um, there it is. It's a bit glary with the ring lights on. But basically, that's what it's going to look like. Look how sparkly it is. I know it's really, really glary. Um, if I turn off the ring light, I might be able to see a bit better of the colour. Hey, it's still quite glary, but um, I'll, I'll put it up, I'll put them up um, in front of a wall tomorrow morning and 
take a photo of them. Look at that, I'm really happy with it. What do you think? It's really pretty and sparkly. Just enough red in the middle. And we've got the gold in the middle, which is what I was going for. So I'm going to finish cleaning them up and um, I'll set them up for you. Take a photo. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that little video, or probably a long video. <laughs> um, and I'll see you for the next one. I'd like to try some different colours, that's for sure. It's nice and textural. Probably could have got away with putting a little bit more glass on. It's kind of sunk in a few areas, and you can see the glitter on top. But I think for my first attempt, it's really pretty. I'm happy with it. I don't think anyone's going to look that closely at it and go, Oh, look, your glass is sunk. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Love you all. Stay safe. See you all soon. Bye for now.